Okay, the first thing we're going to do is call npm init to create a new project. This will create a new package.json file. Just keep answering the questions until you have reached the end. Okay, that's it. Uh, let's open the project folder to see what we got. As you can see, we only have a very basic package.json file, but for the moment, that's all we need. Okay, next we're going to install some dependency that we're going to need for our project. So we're going to run npm install for gulp, gulp minus jade, and gulp live reload server. Well, we're going to use jade for this project as a template engine. You can do that, but you don't have to if you don't want to. If you don't know Jade, don't worry, it's very easy to learn. And if you don't want to use it, you can use just any other template engine you want. The live reload server is also not really necessary, but it makes development a little bit easier. As you might have seen, we've also installed Framework 7 as a dependency via npm. This way we can make sure that we have the latest version of Framework 7 and we can update it via npm anytime we want. The files which we are going to need are located in the dist folder, like CSS and JavaScript. Okay, so let's set up our project. First, we're going to need a gulp file. Also, we're going to need a folder for our source files, as well as a dist folder for the result of our build. Within the source folder, we create a new file which is called index.jade, which is later transcompiled into HTML. So let's create a basic structure for our HTML file. We start with a doc type, create the root element as well as head and body. Next, I'm going to paste in some meta information like viewport or encoding. Next, I simply set a title for our project and reference all the required style sheets for Framework 7. Make sure that you are using the right path within the node modules folder. If you want, you can copy those files manually into your source folder, but I like to keep them where they are. Okay, we're almost done. All we need to do now is reference the JavaScript for Framework 7. Okay, that's it. Now let's add our first view. For the purpose of this demo, we're just going to call this view-main. Within the view, we create a new page, which is called page1. Alright, so far so good. Let's add some content to it and then proceed to the next step. For our gulp file, we first require all the dependencies that we need. Next, we're going to create a variable called path. Here we define where our JADE files are stored and also what will be the target of our build process. Next, we create a new task for transcompiling all the JADE files into HTML.
turn on the Prettifier for better HTML results, but for production use you better set this to false. Okay, so far so good. Let's set up our web server. Next, we define the root path for our web server. Do not use the source folder, because if you do, you wouldn't be able to access the node modules folder via HTTP. So in this case, we simply use the root folder of our project. Also, we enable live reloading, directory listing, as well as the feature to automatically open the browser when we do a new build. A watch task will keep an eye on our files that we change during coding. When we do a change, it automatically triggers the task to compile our templates. As a last step, we define our default task, which calls all other tasks that we have defined so far. Before we get started compiling, we need to fix some errors. An additional path must be defined in form of a string, not of an array, which is required by the task templates. Also, we are missing a dot character here. The last error here is that we need to define the name of the template, not the variable reference. So let's start our server and hope for the best. Now this is already looking pretty good, we can already see our content, but on the run side in console we can see an error. So obviously there is a 404 on the colors CSS files. Keep in mind that Framework 7 ships with two different files for CSS, one for material design on Android and one for iOS. So let's go back to our jade file and check out what the compiler has created for HTML. As you can see there's nothing fancy here, but the jade file is a lot more compact than the created HTML. Now our goal is to have all the pages in one HTML file, but for development purposes keep each page into an own jade file. So let's start with page 1. So let's add some page content. In this case it will consist of a div with class page-content and a paragraph with some dummy text, as well as a link which takes us to a page 2. As a bonus, we add a navbar, which contains the name of the current page. Let's do the same thing for page 2. Good, let's go back to our index and include our pages. Remember that this inclusion is only statically, that means we have separate files during compile time, 
but after compilation during runtime, we have everything into one index.html file. So in Jade, you simply use the include keyword. If you use a different template engine, you can use that. I can recommend Nunchucks, which is a really great template engine, which can do a lot more than just inclusion. The code here looks very similar to in Jade. If you don't want to use a real template engine, you can also use gulp file include. Hey, we're almost done. Let's just include our new page. And don't forget to set class cached, because otherwise Framework 7 will not know that this is not an Ajax page and instead an inline page. All we need to do now is add a little bit of JavaScript in order to initialize our app. First, we bind the event dump content loaded to our document. This is basically the same as jQuery's ready event. But since jQuery is so out of fashion, we use vanilla JavaScript here. I personally like jQuery though. As a configuration parameter, we set push state true. This will store the state of each page into the URL. This way the user can still use the back button of his browser. Next we define our main view. One of the most common things that I tend to always forget is to set DOM cache equals true. Now this is required to enable inline pages for Framework 7, so don't forget it. As a last step, we have to put our pages into a wrapper. This wrapper requires the class pages. Also, we can add a class called navbar fix to it. If we don't, the navbar will overlap with the top of our content. So the result is already looking pretty good. We can navigate between our pages and as you can see, all the pages are within our index.html, so no Ajax pages feature is required here. But in order to keep development a little more easier, we have defined each page into an own Jade file. As we have all pages in our index.html file now, there's no need to compile these Jade files as well. So we trash these and change our GULP file to only compile index.jade. Page 1 and 2 are automatically compiled because they're already included in our index.jade file. <laughs> 